optimally, uh, you could wave a magic wand, we would secure uh, you know, Aaron Judge and retain him and have him signed you know, uh, and happy in the fold as soon as possible. Um, but, you know, uh, as I said at the, the, uh, my presser back in New York, that, you know, he's a free agent. He's earned the right to be a free agent. So he'll, di- he'll dictate the dance steps. Has Hal given you uh, any idea yet about budget-wise for 2023? Or is it still kind of early in the process? We're having a lot of those discussions right now. Um, you know, like, you know, any past year, he's, uh, you know, going to be committing a lot regardless. So, um, so I think it, you know, there's, I don't have a firm number just yet, but I also think, you know, that we'll get a lot more information, you know, over the course of the coming weeks, you know, uh, from our free agent engagements. What are your biggest areas of need? Well, obviously, currently we don't have a right fielder. We don't have a left fielder. Um, you know, uh, always like to improve the pitching. Uh, and I stated in my New York press conference that, you know, we have some kids pushing in on the infield. Um, so there'll be, you know, I would think probably going to be a lot of exciting opportunities that could play out next spring um, in the in the middle infield category. Um, but, you know, we've got to wait and see how all conversations go. You know, when again, when you start talking trades with clubs, you start talking to the agents and free, uh, free agents, and, you know, you get a better, clearer picture of options that exist that you weren't thinking of early on. So we're, we're you know, certainly going to approach everything with a very open mind, you know, even if it means we have something already existing in that position or something anticipated to be in that position. Um, versus the simplistic, hey, here's a vacancy here, we need to attack this area. So we'll, we're going to be we're be hopefully nimble and be able to, to bounce all over as our conversations take us. Having the internal options at shortstop, though, does that kind of take you out of the free agent market at short? Are you still open-minded about it? Like I, a year ago, we were talking about some big names potentially mm-hmm. for your shortstop. Yeah, I, I, I can't say that's the case because, I, again, you know, um, I think we're going to be open-minded. There could be a lot of conversations that lead us down paths we wouldn't have expected and so I'm not saying we would trade any of our kids but I'm not saying that you know it just it just play depends how things play out you know there's there's obviously a lot of great talented players that you know are available in the marketplace via trade and free agency some of which play positions that we you know already have placeholders for or or look forward to people taking a hold of it but at this time of year I think you just have to stay flexible and open-minded to to make sure that you evaluate all real opportunities and how it could possibly fit. What do you need a Seattle Wolfie to make you believe he's ready for the Bronx? I mean, he's got, you know, he's got to go compete in spring training, you know, next year. You know, he had an amazing, so far, run to his pro career, which has been all minor leagues so far. And, you know, so Volpe, along with Peraza and Cabrera, um, you know, those guys will be expected to be in spring training and, and competing for you know, everyday reps uh, with, you know, everybody else that's still standing. So um, that's nature of the beast. And, you know, you w- we'll see, we'll gravitate to those who look like they could be the best version for us moving forward or, or we'll, you know, evaluate it in a way that somebody might need more time and, you know, hopefully everybody stays healthy. So we'll see. But, you know, I mean, he's done everything he needs to do to push himself into the opportunity uh, and see where it takes him. So oh, I think I think he's close. Volpe's close. Peraza's close. I mean, Peraza got up here in the very end, but I think they're all close to competing for an everyday position. So yeah. You may get a release of timetable to finish this. Finish what? Your contract. Oh no. Nothing. No. Brian would be work for contract second. <laughs> so, but no, it's uh, not. I haven't had any chance to, to be honest. Uh, since we last spoke, um, you know, it's something that we'll sit down and get to. But there's some bigger things of need that need to be taken care of first, you know, hopefully, and that's, you know, doing some heavy lifting on some of the free agents that, you know, like an Aaron Judge or so. Cash, so. why, why do you think the Astros have been able to, to separate themselves over the past six years, the success they've had? Have they just put together a good core? I mean, they've turned over the front office and manager. I mean, when you look at a, a team like that that's done very well and has kind of thwarted you guys a little bit, is there anything that you look at that, that, that's going well? you guys have missed on or whether it's yeah, there's some things a number of years ago we missed out on but uh but this this year's version was really special obviously they had a great team you know james click and dusty baker did an amazing job of 
of assembling and then deploying and managing them. And uh, but you know, going into the postseason, they they obviously you know were the best team in the American League and now the best team in the world. Um, uh, their pitching was exceptional from the rotation all the way through the bullpen. It was just uh, I think a lot for any anybody's offense to try to navigate. Uh, you know, they play great defense too. Uh, they got obviously they got some great players down there. So, uh, so I can only speak to this year's team in terms of you wanting to expand it and, right. and the rest of it. I'm not going to go there.